Uh, I'd like to thank the organizers and the Societad Argentina de Análisis Político uh, for asking me to make this brief comment. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't able to accept the invitation to Mendoza because I was already committed to attend a conference in Arizona. Uh, but they asked if I might film a short uh, critical comment uh, on the contribution of Maurizio Viroli to Machiavelli studies uh, from my home in New Jersey. So I'm coming to you from Seton Hall University in New Jersey. Uh, two years ago, I was a guest of the SAP uh, at the Congreso in Paraná, and it's with real pleasure that I recently received a copy of a very fine book that Tomas Farnaschi and uh, Miguel Angel Rossi published with some of our papers. Again, I was asked to make a brief critical comment on uh, Maurizio Viroli's contribution, uh, contributions on Machiavelli. Uh, uh, let me say hello, Maurizio. Uh, I hope you're enjoying your time in Mendoza. Uh, uh, and then uh, let me say this is an important moment in Maurizio's career for two reasons. The first reason is that after nearly 30 years of teaching at what was really his intellectual home at Princeton, he made the decision to become, with respect to academic life at least, something like a mercenary captain, a condottiere, offering his valuable services to the universities that are able to afford them. Although Machiavelli condemned condottieri, uh, uh, in this case, uh, I think he would excuse Maurizio because uh, what this does is give him the opportunity to serve his real patria, Italy, uh, by spending more time there uh, and by contributing in the very active way that he has for several decades to Italy's public life through his, uh, through his uh, wonderful writings, uh, his marvelous book on the uh, Libertà dei Servi, uh, through his uh, uh, editorial pieces published uh, in La Stampa and La Repubblica and other newspapers. Uh, he's uh, been a voice of reason for several decades uh, in a country whose politics have often been irrational. Uh, the second uh, reason this is an important time for Maurizio is that he's published a book. Uh, his new book, Redeeming the Prince, is one in which after years of focusing in particular on Machiavelli's discourses, Maurizio has instead addressed Machiavelli's most famous work, uh, his masterpiece, The Prince. Uh, it's an impressive book. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, it uh, offers a largely convincing reading of the way Machiavelli's work on rulers fits in with uh, his much larger work in the discourses on republics. Now, to review your contribution to Machiavelli scholarship, my, uh, my assignment uh, for today, I just would like to point to four areas. Uh, namely language, religion, patriotism, and biography. Uh, Maurizio's first books on Machiavelli uh, focused on language, uh, the importance of political language, uh, how vocabulary shifted over time. Uh, he surfed in a way on the wave of uh, language scholarship uh, where scholars were toying with the ideas that language is constitutive of reality, not a proposition that Maurizio accepted, but uh, one with, that he flirted with, let's say. Uh, and he moved from there to a study of rhetoric, uh, a substantial study of Machiavelli's uh, skills as a writer of rhetorical prose. Uh, and uh, I think uh, this involved a certain amount of courage because in Italy, there, were, uh, there was a significant movement uh, led by Mario Martelli, uh, arguing that Machiavelli never received the uh, fine formal training uh, in classical humanism of many of his contemporaries. For Viroli, instead, Machiavelli was a sublime rhetorician, and I agree. In the area of religion, uh, Viroli picked up on the idea that uh, Machiavelli had far more 
complicated views on religion than the standard Enlightenment treatments that believed that uh, he was an atheist. Uh, he received some inspiration from a, 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 a late mutual friend of ours, uh, Sebastian de Grazia. Uh, uh, de Grazia's book, Machiavelli in Hell, which has also been translated into Spanish, uh, uh, drew attention to the many ways in which Machiavelli discussed religion and Christianity uh, and argued that Machiavelli was uh, a, a fundamentally a Christian, uh, even though uh, not entirely orthodox. Whether this is really the case is uh, something that uh, is perhaps uh, hard to, uh, to argue uh, when you think of passages like Machiavelli's uh, the famous one in the discourses where he says, our religion glorified humble and contemplative men more than active ones. Then it posited the highest good in humility, poverty, and in disdain for human things. This way of life appears to have rendered the world weak and to given it in prey to wicked men who are able to manipulate it safely since mankind, in order to go to heaven, thinks how to endure the beatings it receives rather than how to avenge them. Machiavelli uh, has a strong animus against Christianity, I think. Uh, and here I would disagree with uh, Maurizio. But that his views uh, were uh, refined and complicated, uh, I, th I think, uh, is something that's hard to dispute. Maurizio decided to study religion at a time when religion was out of fashion, it should be said. One interesting sidelight. Uh, uh, I said that uh, Sebastian de Grazia was a friend of ours, a uh, mutual friend. Uh, uh, I happen to own the, the book uh, of Sebastian's. Uh, uh, it was uh, Leo Strauss's Thoughts on Machiavelli with a dedication uh, from Leo Strauss. Uh, Strauss, of course, argued that Machiavelli uh, was an atheist. Uh, and there's a, uh, a splendid passage on... Uh, uh, page 31 of this copy, uh, with a marginal note of de Grazia's. Uh, Strauss is arguing that because uh, uh, Machiavelli never mentions the devil, uh, never mentions hell, never mentions the soul, uh, he suggests by this silence that these subjects are unimportant for politics. And de Grazia includes a marginal comment, uh, or too important. So we have uh, on the topic of religion, the two great scholars, uh, Strauss and de Grazia, uh, arguing uh, a silencio, but on both sides of the question. For Strauss, uh, uh, these religious uh, subjects are uh, unimportant uh, because, and therefore not mentioned. For uh, de Grazia, they're too important and therefore not mentioned. The third area where uh, Maurizio has made a major contribution is in uh, the study of patriotism. Maurizio took up the theme of patriotism at a time when, uh, in the academic world especially, uh, love of one's country, a desire to defend it, uh, was considered um, out of style, uh, considered uh, uh, jingoistic. Uh, it was uh, often ridiculed. Uh, we lived in a more cosmopolitan world, people would say. Uh, patriotism, uh, not something that academics should devote time to. And here was a full-blooded patriot saying uh, that Italy needed to be redeemed, to be uh, reformed, uh, and, uh, and Viroli picked up the banner of Machiavelli and carried it into the world of Italian politics of the 20th century and the 21st century. Uh, and then uh, the fourth area, biography. Uh, Viroli, uh, uh, beginning with his book, uh, Niccolo's Smile, uh, presented a, uh, a view of Machiavelli that, uh, that humanized him for modern readers. There is, to be sure, a magnificent biography by Roberto Ridolfi uh, that formed the basis for Viroli's uh, subsequent work. Uh, but uh, Viroli uh, wrote in an accessible style. Uh, his book 
sold many, many copies in the United States uh, and around the world. Uh, and uh, he brought the human Machiavelli, the human face of Machiavelli, uh, to the world at large. And he deserves a great deal of, uh, of congrats. He deserves congratulations on that score. Uh, uh, I've grown up uh, reading uh, Maurizio's work, beginning with his early book on Rousseau, continuing through what has become a whole stack of books, some of which you can see here. The books are reliable. Uh, they're accessible to a general audience. They're inspirational for students. Um, although he's not a philologist or an archival researcher, Maurizio in his writings has always tried to reflect the recent discoveries of Machiavelli scholarship. Uh, where other Machiavelli scholars uh, are at pains to come up with shocking and sometimes outrageous readings, Viroli focuses on the fundamentals, on what Machiavelli himself really cared about. Reading Viroli on Machiavelli is in a way I find like eating comfort food. Uh, over the years I've heard Maurizio called many things and I'm sure he has heard himself called many things, uh, but I doubt he has ever heard this before. Maurizio, you are a hamburger. I say that uh, thinking uh, of all of the people we've known uh, in the world of Machiavelli scholarship and the readings that they've come up with. Um, uh, one way of classifying them uh, is to think of them in terms of their diets. Uh, I know Machiavelli scholars uh, whose readings I consider to be those of vegetarians or vegans. Uh, there are people uh, who write books on Machiavelli or clearly on the Atkins diet. They want only red meat. Uh, others uh, are gluten-free. Uh, there are people who, uh, interpreters of Machiavelli, who uh, suffer from various disorders, peanut allergies, diabetes, bulimia, anorexia. Uh, there are Machiavelli scholars uh, who clearly observe halal uh, or kosher. And there's a whole school of Machiavelli scholarship that is on the paleo diet. Now, some of these people have trouble with the hamburger like Viroli, uh, and some don't. But for me, as a fellow Machiavelli scholar, your books offer consistent, satisfying nourishment, like a hamburger. Thank you, Maurizio. <laughs>